doesn't practice polygamy, nor do many other races in the United States, and their marriage rate is higher than African Americans. It's the degradation of the African American family who really promotes that. Well, first of all, Sister Olivia, and I thank you for the comment on the fan base uh, app, I would have to say that no other race in this country is in a state of crisis that we are in, and we have to be careful comparing our situation to others. We are educated and can afford to buy our own homes, so why should we share a husband? I don't know what owning a home got to do with getting married, my beautiful African queen. And one brother said he's okay with one wife. I believe a lot of men are okay with one wife. But again, this is not about you. Part of the problem with the conversation and when we have solution-based conversations, people don't offer solutions for the community. He said, I'm okay with one wife. Nothing wrong with that. But that ain't the question. The question is, can plural marriage help get a lot of these women running around with all these children boys out of control, is plural marriage a possible solution to the devastation of the black family that has so many black mothers raising kids on their own? He said too many black women don't want a regular nine to five black man. Many of these women want a black superman, which is meaning, you know, upper echelon in education, upper echelon in employment, upper echelon in physical attractiveness, you know, they want a Superman. They won't. They don't want a regular black man. How do you? What are you? What are your thoughts on that? Well, I think, and this is part of the reason I raised my hand. Uh, I think it goes to my point that I was going to bring up, talking to the black women, um, talking to the black women, not alienating the black man, but I'm a black woman, so I'm just talking to 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 me you know, my sisters. And I think that right now, all of us have to take the mindset that we are in a time of war as a people. And as a time of war, um, we have to look at doing things uh, differently because we are in a time of crisis. And as a black woman, everything like starts with us. Everything starts with us. And so hold that thought, Hanera, hold that thought. Forgive me for cutting you off. I got to read this comment. Brother Richard on Facebook just said, baby mamas, feel like they deserve the top 20% of black men when they already have children is insane. I don't know if I necessarily agree, but that's powerful as hell. Baby mamas feel like they deserve the top 20% of black men, and that is insane. What's your thought on that? That's pretty powerful. They want the top. Are we, is this like a high value, low value? What are we? It's not a high value, low value. I think what you're about to say, Sister Hanera, and I do agree with you. By saying the baby mama doesn't deserve a top 20% man is to devalue her because she has child. Am I correct? Right. And I agree with you. I agree with you. At the same time, mm -hmm. I agree with you. We should not devalue women with children. And I am against any black man who will devalue a relationship with a woman because she has a child. At the same time, Hanera, why with a woman with a child not consider a regular hardworking nine to five man? Why are you only looking at the top 20 percent? And by top 20, I'm simply speaking of education and income. Okay. Well, see, Doc, okay, so for me, I, I go to the culture. You know me, I'm a student of African culture, so much so that I moved to Africa and submerged myself just so I can make sure that I'm keeping an African perspective, a true African perspective in, in, in my whole life. And so for that, I would have to say that we do have to understand our culture when it comes to polygamy and polygyny and you know if you're a baby mama that's fine if you got children in this and you you may get that man but you may not be his first wife multiple women they in other culture i mean in our african culture we don't have a welfare system mm. no oh that's powerful wait let me say that again let me say that again that was powerful that was a powerful statement queen let me say that sister hanera just said in african culture there is no welfare system and I'm going to add to that because the welfare system is built into the family system. And by allowing plural marriage as an option, polygyny, that helps provide those additional women with the supports that they need, financial as well as human support. 
grandmoms, auntie, uncles, though those plural marriage provide these single mothers with children with the with the necessary economic and human resources that they need that that would make the welfare system unnecessary. Continue. And I would add I would add to that, Doc, it also supports the man because you have to think for that man to be at that level, making whatever income he is, he has a vision, he has a goal that he's striving for. And so every wife, every household that he supports must in turn in some way also support him. It's not like it's just a free lunch or she just sitting on her back. You know what I'm saying? Every time he come around, you know what I'm saying? She has some type of skill set. She has some type of value that adds to what he's doing. He's not just choosing her because she got that BBL. You understand? He's choosing her because her mind and her skill set adds to his movement. And that's how we start. We have to start within the family because we have to build trust all over again. Mm. And who else can you do that with? Rebuild with trust. Family? Yes, we have to rebuild trust. Now, what do you say to women who say... What do you say to women who say, Sister Hanera, how are you going to rebuild trust all over, again, all over again in the black community with plural marriage when black women have issues with each other? How, how is the uh, multi-wife family system going to build trust when you have such petty differences that exist between black women? Right. And so that's where, at, for, for me, the black woman, we have to change our paradigm and uh, recommit, you know, recommit to the black family, recommit to um, the community as a whole, building the community, right? You know, in our African culture, for us, you know, every woman deserves to have a child because that's the way she shows she's good fruit, is like, that's her creation, that's her God power, Right. Mm -hmm. So every woman wants to have a child. We don't run from it like we do now and, you know, stop having kids, but we pick up three and four degrees, right? No, 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 no. What we want to do is have children. Like, if you look at it from that perspective, like, this is my sister, that we're in the community together. You know, she needs an opportunity to have a child also, you know, and if you have a good man, he's taking care of you, your family, your household. Why wouldn't you want that man to also give your sister a child also? Like, it's all in the, the mentality it's all in the mentality some women can't even fathom that because they're too attached we have to detach emotionally from a lot of what we're attached to a lot of women are too jealous they're too possessive that's too much the feminists would eat you up on that mm -hmm. the feminists would say why would you tell black women <clears throat> not to live alone when black women historically <laughs> were not allowed to live alone. They had they didn't leave their mother's house until they got married 70, 80 years ago. You know, that's part of their right as a woman to live independently. And you're saying they got to live in groups and the feminists are going to say, we don't care. What are your thoughts in there? We have to return to our culture. That feminist movement wasn't, it wasn't designed by anybody from the African culture. And it wasn't designed by anyone spiritually in any, any way. So I can't, no, I, black women, there's two things we need to divorce in order to get rid of, um, to start our healing process and take our families back because the revolution is going to start with us. We need to divorce the feminist movement and all the ideas that come with it because it's tearing us up as African, black African women. Um, the second thing we need to divorce is the power structure, whether you're in corporate America, right? We need to divorce that idea or we need to divorce the idea of welfare, the child support system, Section 8. We need to get off. We need, we're, we're so dependent on capitalistic ideas and European Eurocentric ways that our, we've left our families abandoned. And the family is our domain. So, so for, for me, those are two things that we seriously have to take a look at. It's going to take time and it's going to be strategic. And when we come together as black women, we are going to have to work out a plan to where maybe, you know, uh, one of us gets out now and the rest of us who are living community will build it toward you getting out. So there's a goal. 
but you keep in mind that we have to have to divorce from this system. Yeah, I'm not. I don't agree with the feminist movement. It may have served us a little bit in the beginning, but where we are now, it's actually going against our feminine principles. It's actually going against our feminine principles and turning us into more, more masculine, turning us into men. That's not good. And all the while, where's our children being raised? Mm, raising themselves. Uh, Twitter, exactly. Twitter. Instagram is raising the kids. Somebody on Facebook just posted, Sister Judy. They said, child support destroyed the black family. They're saying that child support has eroded the trust between the black man and the black woman. That black men come into relationships afraid to reproduce with, ch with women because if the relationship doesn't work out, they can become economically castrated. Uh, they don't want the white man in their business. And I don't want the white man in my business. Uh, I missed the child support uh, payment last month. I did, and this is just me personally. I pay my child support in bulks. So I'll pay a couple months at a time. Uh, and my youngest daughter, mother, reported me uh, for missing uh, last month's child support. So I got to go before the judge. OK, and um, I should not have to go before the judge. I pay my child support. I've been paying it. My oldest daughter, 19. I've been paying her child support since she was three months old. My youngest daughter is 10. And I'm just giving you all this self-disclosure to add context. I should not have to go down there. Dr. Umar ain't got no business going to family court on Monday. I think I got to go down there to meet with this judge. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pay the mispayment. So when I get down there, I'm going to tell you what's going to happen. I'm going to pay the mispayment. When I get down there, right? And I'm going to go before the judge and I'm going to tell the judge I missed the payment because I pay in bulk, right? And that's going to be the end of it. But it's a waste of time and I got to get harassed by the judge. I got to sit around in family court taking pictures with all my supporters, embarrassing myself because I'm back down here in family court for, you know, my daughter's mother's need to try to inconvenience me when she knows she's going to get her money. So I, so child support is often used by women. I'm not saying all women, Sister Judy, but child support is often used by women to get revenge on the black man. So in my case, my youngest daughter's mother, she wanted to get married. I didn't think that was something we needed to do at that time. I would have considered it had we just spent a little bit more time after the birth of my child trying to see if we could make a family. She didn't want no more time. I'm having your child. I need to be your wife. Those are her exact words. That didn't happen. So child support was the result. Uh, we had an agreement that I would give her a certain amount of money per month when my daughter was born. And in exchange for that, I would get to see my daughter uh, one day a week to start. She was an infant, so I didn't want to keep her away from my mother too often. She was being breastfed, and I respected that, and I wanted that. But again, I was willing to pay the child support. There was no issue at all, at all. Guess what? She took me anyway. So I'm just speaking on behalf of black men who have no business being in the child support system. And we're purely there for the revenge issues of our baby moms. We have to take responsibility, though, Sister Judy, because we got them pregnant. Hold on. We have to take responsibility because we got them pregnant. Right. So I wouldn't even be saying this to you if I was more responsible. And because of that, I know that I cannot play the victim role and I'm not playing the victim role. But from a black community perspective, Sister Judy, is child support part of our problem? Um, I think men should just learn how to choose better. Men should know how to choose better. But is that a solution? Because yes. that's just like the white man saying, yes. when you go to jail for selling drugs, it's just like the white man saying, you should have never dropped out of high school. That's true. They should have never dropped out of high school. But we must allow room for one thing, Sister Judy, that has existed since the beginning of time. And that is called human error. The right of the human being to make a mistake and correct it. We must allow for human error. So I agree with you. We need to be more responsible. The power is in the chooser. The power is in the chooser. Yeah. I agree with you 99%. I'm going to give you the 1% where I disagree, Sister Judy. I'm a psychologist. I've studied psychology since the age of 18. I'm an expert in it. And I'm going to tell you right now, no human being, no human being can completely foretell the behavior of another. If we could, divorce would be unnecessary. 
Someone says people who have made a strong, healthy commitment prior to reproduction are far less likely to have to deal with child support. The issue is really not about child support. The way we reproduce, form relationships is dysfunctional and destructive. Somebody said, oops, let me go back. I'm still on fan base, fan base, excuse me. Why is this lady trying to nitpick, acting like nobody has problems? Us as the people need to change, men and women. Someone else said, we are in a culture where we are deciding on if we want to be a family after we have the child. How are we having conversations about securing more children in the name of sisterhood when the ideology is warped in the black mind? Someone also said, I think we also need to have some community accountability conversation about the black church not using the millions of dollars they get to help rebuild our homes, help our struggling moms and businesses. Let me come over to Facebook. Muhammad Ali says, you could have came to an agreement with the woman before being put on child support. If she can't trust you, there got to be a higher authority. Uh, Brother Ali, uh, as I said in my situation, and I speak with other brothers, you probably wasn't listening I said me and my daughter's mother came to an agreement on the amount of money and she still took me to child support because she wanted me to suffer. Uh, the money wasn't the problem. I didn't want to be in the system. And because I didn't want to be in the system, uh, she put me in it. Someone else says it's like some people only make babies just for child support. It's so sick. Start a family out of love. On Facebook, somebody else said woman requiring marriage before having a child would solve a lot of this. But I'm not going to put it all on a woman. I'm not going to put it all on a woman. And I speak for myself and other black men. We need to be more responsible. We do. Sister Judy was right. We do need to be more responsible. But as a community, I do think child support being used as a weapon is beginning to turn black men away from getting in relationships. Married or not, you can still end up on child support. You can pay child support when you separate from your race. So, excuse me, separate from your marriage. So it's not just about being married. Married men who get divorced pay child support too. It's not just a marriage thing. Someone also said child support is definitely a problem. It puts the man against the woman instead of bringing them together. And so I, I don't agree um, with the child support system. I think it's... Uh, part of the family to to take care of women we can't use that as ammunition against the men we have to kind of own up to our our responsibility and we have to play our role with the man you know you can't bully your way with with no man you have to be you have to play your position you yeah it's often man. it's often as you said it's often not about money it's about power it's about in power. my case she didn't want the money to go from my hand to hers that was the issue she didn't want to have to uh compromise with me because obviously when you compromise each party has 50 percent of the power she wanted all the power so rather than me give her the money which i planned to do with no problem she went down she didn't even give me a chance to be late or anything she went yeah, right down there and put me in child support. Behavior. You yeah. see what I mean by this system turns us women into men, into men? Like, that's not, she She has to deal with the ego and submit herself. She, that's not her role. She can't do that. That's too but much it wasn't even a need to submit. All you do is collaborate, compromise. I agree to the amount. She said, yes, let's do this. And I ended up in child support court. It was a brother early on Facebook. I read the comment. He said that, there's a lot of baby moms who want the top 20% of black men in terms of income and education, as opposed to just getting them a regular black man. But I'm going to take baby mom out of it. I'm going to say black women, period. Do you think black women's economic expectations can often be a barrier to them getting married? I saw another person put a comment and what they said, Sister Kizzy, was 80% of black women want 10% of black men. Let me repeat that. They said 80% of black women want 10% of black men. Now, of course, we will never know for sure if those percentages are correct. But let's just say for the sake of conversation, there's some truth to that. Even if you say 50% 
of black women want 10% of the black men in terms of education, income, physical attractiveness. If that's the case, 40% of those black women will not get married because they're overlooking the other 90% of black men who are available to them. My question to you, are the economic expectations a barrier or one of the causes to the low rate of marriage for our sisters? I'm going to say, for one, it, to me, it depends on your community and where you live. Here okay. in Chicago, no, I don't see it. I honestly don't see it. It's, it's totally different. Gotcha. Most women are just looking for a good man to help them with their children or just with themselves and their bills. Um, so, and, and, and also the generation. I have, I have women, young women, they're adults, five women, and they're just looking for love. They're looking for someone who... Uh, can help them with their bills and just make them happy. Somebody on Facebook just made a post and he said one of the things that's turning black men off from black women, particularly those between 35 and 45, he said too many of the 35 to 45 year old black women, and I don't know if this is true or not, that's why I'm asking you as a queen. They are engaging in behaviors that you would expect in black women in their 20s and teens, particularly as it relates to social media. A lot of 35 to 45 year old women are up there twerking, doing sexual videos. You know, it, it's kind of sexually immature, some of the stuff that they're doing. And a lot of brothers are like, I might have been interested in her, but once I went to our IG page, her TikTok page, and I'm seeing how she just kind of putting all of her assets, you know, online for every man to see is thirsty. And so a lot of brothers feel like sisters between 35 and 45 who really need to be getting serious are engaging in sexual promiscuity by way of social network. What are your thoughts on that? Maybe not for all, but many is dangerous. I agree with that man. I, I don't think any woman should be on Facebook twerking. <laughs> Sister Kizzy, you said no woman should be on Facebook twerking. And do you think black parents need to do something about their daughters? Because our black yes. teenagers are off the hook. Yes. They are yes. out of who is letting their daughter do that stuff. On so, like, what is going on with the co Like, are we raising our kids anymore, Sister Kizzy? Yeah. And, and honestly, we, we aren't. Okay. Talk to me about child support. And let me say this about child support. I don't have a problem being on it, although I shouldn't be. But I'm at a position where I can, I can handle it, right? I can handle it. Uh, my concern about child support is all my brother's who dropped out of high school, don't have a college degree, you know, been to jail, can't find a job because they have a strike on their name. What the hell are they doing in child support? I've been at child support hearings where I saw the judge lock up a 70-year-old father. He was 70. 70. And he told the judge, I get paid tomorrow. He told the judge, I get paid tomorrow, your honor. Can you give me until tomorrow and I will bring my whole check up here? He was a 70-year-old father. I think the kid was a teenager. And the judge locked him up, man. I could have cried in there. How you lock up a man that age when he said he going to give you your, his whole check? Then another father was in there. And he said he just got a job. He told the judge, he said, I just got a job. If you lock me up, I lose this job. How am I going to pay child support if you lock me up and I lose my job? And the judge said, you should have thought about that and locked him. Bro, some of the stuff, I my case is nothing because I handle mines. My case, but what I see go on in there, when I go down there, bro, it make you want to cry the way they destroying these black men who trying to do right, my brother. But go ahead. It's definitely a hindrance on on having children out of Whitlock and having children even when you're married, you know? So 
the child support, I would say you got to take accountability on both sides. Men, if you know you're not financially stable, you know you ain't got $10 in the bank, you know you wrap it up. Wrap it up. Wrap it up. Condoms for a dollar. Wrap it up. Wrap it up. Condoms at the health center. Wrap it up. Because not wrapping it up might cost you a prison sentence. Shout out to Bill Clinton. Bill Clinton criminalized child support. Bill Clinton did that back in the 90s, and it went underneath the radar. Nobody called him out. That was Bill Clinton who brought all the black men paying child support under the supervision of the criminal justice system. Uh, my last question for you, Kaheen, before we move on to Brother Edmund Savvy and Ashley. What is your opinion of the sexually suggestive behavior of black women on social network from the teens to the 20s to the 30s to the 40s to the 50s. It's a lot of gyrating. It's a lot of twerking. I mean, they're not sending this stuff to their boyfriend privately through text. I mean, this is for the whole world to watch them undress, shake their butt, walk around half nude. Where did this come from? And how are, and you know, our sisters want to get married. They want men to respect them. But the social network behavior is anything but respectful on part of many of our sisters. What's going on with black women and the sexually subjective behavior on social network, my brother? Well, I feel like I don't want to say they're, they're expressing themselves because if you're expressing yourself, that's just how your inner soul is trying to come out. So I'm going to say they're... they're They've been, they've been closed up for a long time. You know how women was treated for a long time in the 60s and 70s. They didn't have a, a say-so on how they can act. You know how they can, you know, dance, how they can be. So I would say the, the TikTok gave them an outlet or, you know, a, a, a outlet for them to do what they want to do at all in all ages without them. But why not, why not use social network to teach the next generation of black women or use social network to talk about your experiences that young black girls can learn from or teach them how to cook, teach them how to build a website, teach them how to uh, open an online business. Go ahead, bro. Because, you know, TikTok, they've been getting paid off this during the quarantine, the creator farm. They like doing this this OnlyFans that been making a... But OnlyFans is private, though. I mean, anybody can subscribe, but at least with OnlyFans, you got to pay to see it. You got to pay to see it. But when I go through the Facebook feed, the Instagram feed, the TikTok feed, they not even being paid, bro. This ain't no OnlyFans. This is free, pre behavior. They weren't taught. That's the another way. They don't talk properly. They didn't have the right female role models. Mm, mm. Had to. Got you. Brother Kaheem, thank you for your contribution, brother. Good thought. Drums.